Happy Monday, friends, and I hope you've been with us throughout this series called Made for This. We've been talking about getting in alignment with the kingdom of God. And outside of accepting Jesus as our Savior, uh, which is the most important way to get in alignment with God, there are things that involve the word kingdom. We come into a family when we commit our lives to God. We come into the family of God, but we also come under the authority of a new kingdom. And I've wanted this series to help us think the right way because part of salvation involves the transforming of our minds. And how do you think the right way to be in alignment? Uh, it's interesting, Peter talked about Christ followers as being aliens and strangers. One of the translations said, it almost sounds like an insult. But what he was doing was reminding us that our ultimate home is heaven. And so really we are just travelers through this world. Whether we live here 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 plus years, we're really just passing through and heaven's our ultimate home. But he's also contrasting uh, two kingdoms. Are we living in the kingdom of this world? Or are we living to advance the kingdom of God? And that's the reminder that I want us to have today. And I want to take you to a picture of this. It's a New Testament passage about an Old Testament guy named Moses. This is Hebrews chapter 11. It says, By faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking forward or looking ahead to his reward. Moses grew up in a real kingdom and a real palace and the kingdom of Egypt was the place at the time. That was the epicenter of world power and he was known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So financially, positionally, he had it made. You know, whatever you want to call it, he was set up for a future in a kingdom. And it's not that nice things are bad. God's not against even people um, being in positions of influence and power. I mean, earlier years, hundreds of years earlier, God actually put Joseph, one of his men, in a palace, made him number two in the kingdom. So that in itself isn't bad, but for Moses, he was out of alignment for the purpose that God had for his life. He could have lived in a world and in a worldly system that wasn't what God had for him. And so at some point, Moses has to make a choice. That's what I want you to think about. There's two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of this world and there's the kingdom of God. And let's keep in mind where our kingdoms are. So my, my life, my dreams, my hopes, my family, my career, if it's all about me and advancing my kingdom, that is the world's, that's the world's kingdom. And then there's God's. And have I put him first? Moses, he has to give up something valuable to gain something more valuable. This is where I want you to realize it's not always just giving up the, a bad thing. Sometimes it's giving up a valuable thing. Moses gave up the riches or the treasures of Egypt to get in on the better thing. And even by faith, he was seeing Jesus. That's what's so interesting about Hebrews. By faith, he was seeing past his own world, up ahead to the kingdom that Jesus was going to create. And by faith, he's a part of it. So he's giving up something valuable to get in on something more valuable, way more valuable, the kingdom of God. Jesus would come and say, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added to you as well. So it doesn't mean we don't care about our families or we don't care about our career, that we neglect them because we're putting God first. No, it just means this. You put God first and he'll help you with your career. He'll help you be the better parent. He'll help you be the better employer or employee or whatever it might be. But it is a kingdom question. Some people have used at times the synonymous word, a lordship question. That at some point, we don't just make Jesus our savior, we, and we don't just call him our Lord, Lord, Lord. We make him our Lord. We truly surrender our lives. We essentially go all in, push all the chips of our lives in, our, our finances in, our time, our dreams, our ambitions, our family, all the good things and all of our challenges. And we push them all in the middle and we say, God, I want to be surrendered under your kingdom and under your authority. I want to live out my purpose that you have for me, help me to do that. And I believe that that's 
It's not a one and done. In many ways, it's surrendering and taking up your cross every day to do that. But I do think there's a time in which the, the question is called for. Have you surrendered it all to the Lord? I want to pray for that today because I believe sometimes we get where we've got one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom of God. And if you're thinking about a fence, that's just an uncomfortable place to live, straddling the fence of what God would really want us to do. I want to believe that this is the year you go all in, that the blessings that come with that, even though there's some cost to it, even though there's some, at times, give up something good for something better, I believe that if you do it and when you do it, God will be there to help you, God will be there to bless you, God will be there to use you. Let's get on the better path. That's the path of God's kingdom. Let me pray over that today. Jesus, thank you for uh, reminding us that you came to establish a kingdom. And you even told us to pray, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So even though we're passing through and heaven's our home, what we do here does matter. You care about us being representatives of your kingdom. You care about us advancing and building and investing in your kingdom. And so I pray that that would become clear to my friends today. What does that mean? How does it need to show up in our, in our practical lives, in our spending of our time and our money, thinking about how we talk and how we behave? Jesus bring clarity to us. We want to be aligned with you. We want to be aligned with your ways. We want to be under the authority of your kingdom. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.